friends welcome back to my youtube channel english video class in this video we are going to learn a short story to all creators great and small it is by ruskin bond this is a short story presented for the students of bcom first semester of bangalore north university and also for bangalore university in this session we are going to have the introduction to the author ruskin bond followed by that we are going to introduce to the short story all creators great and small then from the point of view of examination you will have objective questions these will be tested for two marks we have short answer type questions or paragraph questions these will be tested for about five marks in the examination friends do watch the video till then and by the way i am professor venkat ram up here assistant professor of english at government first grade college gudi bande Now let's come to the introduction to the author Ruskin Bond. Ruskin Bond is an Indian author of British descent. He was born on 19 May 1934 at Kasuli Punjab state agency British India. He lives with his adopted family in Landor, Missouri, India. His parents are Edith Clark and Abre Alexander Bond. He got educated at a boarding school in Shimla. Ruskin Bond has over 150 titles under his belt. Many of these pen for children. Some are short story collections, other memoirs, and some poetry too. He wrote one of his first short stories, Untouchable, at the age of 16 in the year 1951. The Room on the Roof is his first novel written at the age of 17. A kind of semi-autobiographical story of the orphan Anglo-Indian boy named Rusty. Vagrants in the Valley. as a sequel to room on the roof has come out ghost stories from the raj a season of ghosts a face in the dark and other hauntings are some of the supernatural fictions he has written the blue umbrella funny side up a flight of pigeons short stories for our <coughs> the blue umbrella funny side up a flight of pigeons are some of the short stories written for the children The lamp is lit is a collection of essays. His autobiography is titled as The Lone Fox Dancing. Ruskin Bond received a number of awards. Among them, Sahitya Academy Award for English in the year 1992, Stanford Padma Shri Award in the year 1999, and Padma Bhushan in the year 2014. He also won John Llewellyn Rice Prize. Now let's come to the introduction of the short story All Creators Great and Small. All creatures, great and small, highlights the theme of connection, friendship, attachment, power, anger, and preservation. This text talks about a few people make peculiar creatures as their pets, and many people don't like unusual pets as they are afraid of them. The exploration of a connection between human and animals is also the theme of the story. Narrator tells about his grandfather who was fond of animals. and like the animals whom his grandfather has kept as pets the relationship between the grandmother and grandfather is also analyzed in this story taken from ruskin bond's collected short stories the story is narrated in the first person by an unnamed person the text deals with different attitude towards having peculiar creatures as their pets the difference between usual and unusual pets and consequences of having such unusual pets with reference to the text is dealt in the story the stories are simple and lucid a quality that made him a literary star friends now let's come to the understanding of the short story all creatures great and small and the opposite Let us come to the objective type of questions. Wherein you are required to answer in two or three sentences each. Well, these questions are tested for two marks. Let us come to the first question. Who did the grandfather get the python from? Grandfather bought the python from a snake charmer for six rupees. How did the grandfather impress the crowds with the python? 
The grandfather impressed the bazaar crowd by slinging the python across his shoulders and walking home with it. Grandmother was tolerant of most of the birds and animals but drew the lines at dash pets. Answer is reptile. Earlier, the grandfather had brought home a sweet tempered blank. The answer is a chameleon. Fifth question. Why had the grandmother nearly fainted and later insisted that he get rid of the python right away? Yeah. Grandmother nearly fainted at the sight of python curled around the grandfather's throat. She insisted that he get rid of python right away. Sixth question. Why was grandfather in no mood to listen to get rid of python? Grandfather protested to get rid of python because he believed the python was young and he would soon get used to them. Grandmother suggested to her husband to lock the creature in blank to go back to the bazaar and get snake charmer to take it back. Options are A. The poultry house B. The garden C. Jungle across the river D. The bathroom The answer is the bathroom. Eighth question. Why did the grandfather feel crestfallen? Grandfather was crestfallen because he had been able to find the snake charmer from whom he had brought the young python. Ninth question. Finally, the grandmother asked grandfather to leave the python in the blank. The answer is option A. Jungle across the river. B. The bathroom. C. The garden. G. The veranda stays. The correct answer is jungle across the river. Tenth question. Who was Mabel and why did the grandfather dislike her? Mabel was grandfather's cousin. Grandfather disliked her because she was fussy. Eleventh question. Where was python kept and how did it escape? The python was placed in a steep sided tin tub in the bathroom. Twelfth question. Where did Aunt Mabel see the python for the first time? Aunt Mabel saw the python for the first time on the nearby branch in the Java tree. 13th question. How did Aunt Mabel react to python's first appearance? Aunt Mabel was trying to pluck Java when she first saw the python on a nearby branch. She screamed and went flying up the veranda steps looking as though she had seen a ghost. 14th question. When did Aunt Mabel decide to pack her bags and leave? After Aunt Mabel saw Python saw him admiring her under the cushion, she decided to pack her bags and leave. 15th question. Python's weakness as perceived by the grandfather was Option A, umbrella. Option B, reflection. Option C, juicy chicken. The correct answer is reflection. Sixteenth question. What did the author Ruskin Bond explore in the story All Creatures Great and Small? The answer is. Author Ruskin Bond explores the funny situation that people who keep strange and unusual creatures as pets experience in their life. Now let's come to the short answer F questions are also called as pair of questions. Well, these questions will be tested for five marks in the university examination. Friends, in this video, I am giving just the model answer. You could update it and you could add and delete the contents based on your experience. Friends, in this video, I am not just giving the questions. I am giving the keywords in the question wherein these keywords or phrases may be used to frame the question for your examination. Well, remember these keywords and also the answers that I discuss in this video. Friends, now let's come to the first and foremost topic of discussion in this video. That is bringing home a python. Ruskin bond. He has a law for description of natural surroundings and animals. The story, All Creatures Great and Small, is a funny story. This story explores humorous situations. 
the narrator of his story is a young school going boy living with his grandparents the author writes that many people have a strange habit of keeping unusual pets the grandmother's objection to bringing home a python by grandfather a young and four feet long grandmother was tolerant to birds and animals but reptiles repelled her the grandfather brings a python from a snake charmer impressing the bazaar toad by slinging it across his shoulders and mabel visited them the next day grandfather disliked her because of her fussiness now let's move on to the second topic of discussion that is python and the chaos the arrival of python certainly created chaos in the author's house grandmother nearly fainted the sight of python curled around grandfather's neck she was afraid of it and asked him to get rid of it at once grandmother reminded him of his cousin aunt mabel's visit and that she would leave the house the moment she saw the python in the house later she asked him to lock it in the bathroom and go to the bazaar and find the snake charmer and let him come and take it back but they could not find the snake charmer so the grandmother asked him to leave it in the jungle across the river the third topic of discussion in this video is aunt mabel's first reaction to the python after aunt mabel arrived at their house the python did not appear until the third day and was confident that it had gone for good one evening they had a terrible scream and they saw aunt mabel come flying up the veranda steps looking as though she had seen a ghost she gasped as she told them that when she was reaching for java she had seen a snake staring at her with a hungry look as though it would devour her aunt mabel imagined the snake must have been a boa constrictor and must have been 20 feet long and look terribly at her in a queer way one day when aunt mabel saw the python admiring her from under a cushion she packed her bags and went home now let's come to the topic the python had fallen in love with its own reflection the grandmother asked her grandfather to lock the python in the bathroom and go to the bazaar and find the snake charmer and get him to take it back After two days, the python begins to make series of appearances, often in unexpected places. It scared Aunt Mabel, and she packed her bags and left. One morning, the author saw the python curled up in the dressing table, gazing at its reflection in the mirror. Python had made it a habit to make his appearances in the dressing mirror. He had become enamored with his reflection. The author makes. A fun remark that the python was trying to look better for Aunt Mabel, and got a slap on his head from his grandmother in return. Python's in more for his reflection ultimately led him being trapped. Using this weakness of the python, grandmother lured it into a trap in which he had placed a mirror. One morning, the author saw the python curled up in a trap, admiring himself in the mirror with something resembling a smile on his face. Even as the author lowered the trap door gently, he was in raptures over his handsome reflection. Later, they took the python and left the trap in the jungle with the trap door open. Friends, now let's come to the topic of discussion. That is the distinction in the preferences of the elderly couple towards the exotic pet in the story. The author brings out the unusual taste of some people who like to keep peculiar creatures as pets. While others are mortified by such creatures, in the story, grandfather had unusual pets such as handsome. Many people have unusual pets because they are far more exciting than ordinary ones. Grandmother was tolerant of most of the birds and animals, but she drew the line at reptiles. She put her foot down when grandfather brought home a young python. She said they made her blood run cold. Grandfather brought the python from snake charmer and walked back home slinging the python across his shoulders trying to impress the bazaar crowd. Grandmother nearly fainted at the sight of the python curled around grandfather's neck. 
She cried out to grandfather that it would strangle him and he should get rid of it at once. He told her that the python was a young fellow and he would get used to them. Grandmother reminds grandfather that his cousin Mabel would be coming to their house to spend a few weeks with them and she would certainly go back the very moment she sees a snake. The grandmother then orders the grandfather to take the python and give it back to the snake charmer. Let's come to the topic. The grandfather succeeded in caging the python. The python got into the habit of admiring his reflection in the dressing table mirror. The grandfather thought that he had found the vulnerability of the python and hatched a plan. He made a large cage with a mirror at one end and left the juicy chicken and various other delicacies inside and fitted the opening with a trap door. After a few days, the author found the python curled up in the cage after having eaten everything left out for him. The python was relaxing in front of the mirror admiring himself. The author imagined that the python had a smile on his face and quietly lowered the trap door and thus they succeeded in trapping the python. Now let's come to the topic the humor between Aunt Mabel and the python. The story all creatures great and small is full of humor and most of the conversations appear hilarious, especially those concerned with Aunt Mabel. The grandfather had bought a python to the house as a pet. When grandmother protests, he tells her that she will get used to him. Grandmother scorns and tells him that he, she had no intention of getting used to him. She informs him that his cousin was coming to stay with them the next day. The grandfather disliked Aunt Mabel's visit due to her fussiness. He retorts that they ought to show the python as soon as they arrive. Grandmother compels grandfather to return the snake to the snake charmer. So, he locks the python in the bathroom and goes to the bazaar to find him. The python slipped away from the bathroom and after searching for it everywhere, they concluded that it was gone for good. After Aunt Mabel arrived for her three weeks stay at their house, the python did not appear until the third day and was confident that it had gone for good. That evening, they had a terrible scream and they saw that Aunt Mabel came flying up from the veranda steps. Looking as though she had seen the ghost, she gasped as she told them that she had seen a snake staring at her with a hungry look, as though it would devour her. Aunt Mabel imagined that the snake must be a boa constrictor and looked terribly at her in a queer way. Grandfather tells her that she will go out and kill it before sheepishly taking hold of an umbrella as a weapon and salting it into the garden, followed by the author. After this incident, the python began to make a series of appearances at unexpected places. Aunt Mabel had another fit of hysteria when she saw him admiring her from under a cushion and immediately packed her bags and decided to hasten from their house. The python began to be involved by his reflection in the dressing table mirror. The author humorously commented that the python was trying to look better for Aunt Mabel. I believe this video is highly informative and useful for your examination purpose. If you haven't subscribed to my channel as of now, please do subscribe for more useful videos like this. And hit the bell button for notifications on any kind of updates regarding your syllabus. And never forget to like this video and share it to your friends. Thank you very much for watching this video. We will meet in the next video for an interesting topic. Thank you. Take care. Bye.